examples, when I started my career in telco, which is not when I started my career, but in telco, when I moved to telco, uh, airplanes, cockpits look like that, and cars, uh, dashboards look like this. Today, in 2018, an airplane cockpit looks like the one on the right, and a car dashboard looks like what we have on the right as well. The difference, uh, well, it's astronomical compared to what we have been able to do in telco. Uh, today, uh, airplanes fly almost themselves. I have a cousin of mine that fortunately retired last year. He was a pilot for a Azerbaijan Airlines, and he told me, in, when I saw him, he was back here in Madrid in April last year, and he told me, you know, if I had to pass the, the flying test again, I wouldn't pass. The airplane, A320 is his airplane. He says, flies by itself. Truly. Takes off, lands, taxis, all by itself. He's just there to make sure that it doesn't go astray. Cars today, autonomous cars are on our streets already. Some of them have some mishaps, but you know, we'll correct that. Uh, that's part of technology advance. Uh, but, you know, it's true, you know, the, the, the technology has advanced on other areas faster and further than we've been able to do. Uh, I don't know why, but that's the reality. You know, we don't have autonomous central offices, we don't have autonomous uh, transport layers, and that's what we're trying to do in this uh, Congress, see how far we can get. At Telefonica, we have been working uh, we have recognized uh, from several years ago, working with some, some of my colleagues here, with Silvia, with Maria, that things were coming uh, to our side and people were demanding from telcos something that we were not able to, to provide. And that's when OTTs start to come up and OTTs start to get into our turf and being able to fast, uh, foster our customers and pull them away with uh, services and, and products that uh, telcos were too slow to deploy. And that's been a real, uh, real detrimental to our business. Uh, you, everybody, everybody knows it. Uh, WhatsApp came one day in 2011, and by the end of 2011, SMS was almost history. Today's... Uh, a side business that uh, has no income revenue for telcos and it's just uh, it's there to, you know, it's a side business that will kill us pretty soon. Uh, imagine that WhatsApp was done by three guys in two PCs, that if as telcos we have taken care of them correctly, we'll still be selling SMS very nicely, isn't it? Uh, but we didn't. And s since then, people realized that they could go into the network and do whatever they wanted without us participating. That's very detrimental to our business again. So, give you some figures, and these are public figures, these are not from us, this, we just picked them up. Traffic is growing unstoppable. More and more video is there every day. More auton autonomous vehicles will require more and more data to be pushed through our, through our networks. Uh, massive IoT, uh, you know, we still have not seen the ramp up of IoT, but pretty soon, you start seeing it. And imagine that uh, we have to uh, uh, instantiate and provision each IoT device as we do today, a cell phone or a, or a customer in, our ho in his home. You know, most of our companies do it manually. Imagine that we have to, every refrigerator, everything that's on the home, every, every autonomous vehicle, every train uh, has to be instantiated manually. That will be almost impossible. That's an impossible task, and we will fail at it if we don't change the way we do business. And then demanding queue of uh, quality of experience. Uh, customers want things personalized, personal data, personal storage, personal video, personal TV. Planes, cars will drive themselves. Uh, there will be individuals flying there, uh, autonomous vehicles, uh, the, you know, everything that's coming is, is going to be, in that sense, demanding a quality of experience in particular for each, for each device and for each person. And we've not, you know, if we don't, if we're not capable of bringing all this together and, and starting from the edge of the, of the network, 
and automatize the edge, everything that we do on the core is going to be practically useless. So we embarked, <coughs> we embarked on, a, on a journey on seeing how we could automatize the edge and make sure that every central office uh, could at one point be an autonomous entity. Uh, we have uh, most of the companies, or we were working from here for many years trying to solve this equation, but we were not paying any attention, attention here. Cloud was coming out in 2000, uh, 2010, 2011, and was trying to push all the, all the data and all the, trans, all the computing from here to here, which was quite nice because uh, it, it allowed us to centralize and to do all these kinds of things. But as demand for new products and services was growing and coming up, and IoT was coming up, autonomous vehicles, we realized and we start to realize two or three years ago, that pushing all the data here for computing and bringing the solution back, it was gonna be, uh, it was gonna be a cause of tremendous delays and where you're driving, a delay of milliseconds could really mean that you can have a, an accident. Yeah, same thing with anything that, that is happening on the edge. Now, augmented reality is also putting a lot of pressure on having the processing done way in the, uh, in the center and pushing it back to the edge. So how do we do this? Uh, we figured that if we allowed third party players to put their so par partially put their solutions at the edge and have them uh, close the gap and guarantee the latency, uh, we were able, you know, the growth was gonna be exponentially on the services that we can provide. We worked extensively on designing this new platform. Uh, we've used Cord, which Michael mentioned before. We have used uh, uh, SDN. We have used uh, cloud comp uh, elements, and we came up with a clear, with a nice solution, very simple. And we figured that if we treat everything as a new service, and we break out of the legacy, yeah, you know, the the way to do the automation was going to be much much easier. And, uh, and we have to break, and it was very simple and very easy to break with a legacy. You know, a lot of people think, you know, well, how do you, you know, why do you think the legacy, you can break with a legacy? Well, this connection, once you unplug it from the legacy equipment, unplug it to the new, to the new service, uh, to the new service and the new data center or central office, there is no way, uh, or you break from the legacy because you are breaking it, you're putting a new connection, and then all the way back, you don't need to coexist with any equipment. That for us was instrumental in being able to do what we've done, and what we are testing right now in a central office. Um, that also allowed us to put third party services and being able to uh, have them individually set on, each, on the central office. We're not to worry about orchestration, and those things because what we're, worried, what we're working is on this realm. Orchestration to the back, it continues to be what it was before. Uh, I don't need to set up a service from here all the way here uh, as long as we can set up the services on the very edge. So that's what we progress on the, what we've done on the project. To give you an idea of where we are work, what we worked on, uh, First of all, we had some principles. It says, you know, the, every central office will be an autonomous entity. Uh, it will work only in IPv6. It will be cloud, and it will be uh, SDN connected. But SDN, not all the way to, to the back end, but just to the first point of connection to our Unica central uh, uh, CPDs. And at that point, we could also move the transport uh, we can connect to the transport, either going through the CPD, regional CPD if it need be, or we can go st straight out to the internet if we could deliver the traffic right out. The idea is that uh, we minimize the number of interfaces, so latency is uh, as low as possible and it's guaranteed, because the services that are of the future that are gonna be 
provided, re, uh, demand that uh, the, the latency is guaranteed, especially for t things like robotics, uh, video, direct TV, uh, video editing, things that, we're, that our customers are already starting to demand and that we need to provide uh, as a company, we're, we're unable to provide at this time if we don't have a zero touch and very few interfaces between the entry point, the, the, cent, the delivery center, and, the, and back to the entry point, and if we're not able to do some pre-processing of data. The amount of data that, uh, if we don't filter and process data here, and the amount of data we have to push to the internet, it will, it will demand on the telcos uh, an unsustainable uh, traffic growth on the, on the transport network. So back to what we what we done. Uh, what the aim of the whole the whole experiment we're doing uh, is to digitalize the user experience and uh, real time broadband speed provisioning. Uh, we have we, we are able right now to uh, having any type of um, ONT in our fiber network that the uh, the ONT is recognized by the system and pre provision and provision automatically. Uh, this allows us, this will allow the customers to set up their products and services very nicely and change them upon demand, but from the, from the very edge of the network, not from the way we're doing it right now, that we have to intervene and have the central, the customer care agents or the customer care uh, channels take care of all, the, of, all the, of all the changes. What we've done is that the customer will be able to interact with the system since it's a fully programmable network, as uh, Juan Carlos explained yesterday. And we are able, <coughs> to, we, are, we are allowing the customers to charge uh, or to configure their products and services a way that, uh, that will suit their needs and not the needs of the telco. Uh, this is a change in paradigm. We're far away from being able to deploy this uh, Massively, but it's an idea and it's a concept that we're really working on it and we're able to do. And this will allow us to put third-party products and services in the network and allow them to personalize and compete, these third-party products and services compete to see which one is the best and the best solution for the customers and not what is happening today, that we're forced to choose one solution for our customers and try to push that solution to the customer. Let the customer decide what is best for him, and this way we can truly uh, deploy this. Um, and this is very much what I had to say, unless we want to go any, any further into the architecture we used or anything, or you have any questions on it? Yes. Uh, well, this is fascinating, and uh, I guess we'll ask the audience questions here in a second. Uh, yes, what's the architecture? <laughs> okay. I mean, I saw a, uh, a glimpse of it. Yeah, that one. Okay, uh, what we've done is uh, we, we have used cord here, uh, a variation of cord. We hyper simplified cord in the sense that we use IPv6 only. And all uh, IPv4 is, uh, is a service. Every, we think that we we tried, we test, and we tried, and the fundamental is that anything that happens on the central office is a service. I have, uh, everything has been softwareized and has been made a, um, a logical solution, so we don't have any uh, proprietary black boxes in this. This is all open compute uh, project infrastructure. Uh, it's all, we have no routers on it, we have, uh, uh, commodity switching, commodity IT infrastructure, and we're using uh, AT&T's uh, uh, white box uh, OLTs uh, and GPON, GPON OLTs. Right now we're testing XGS PON uh, from two other vendors with different technologies. One is a monoport um, OLT and another one is uh, just a blade OLT with uh, different ports. The software under it, uh, we use as a, as, a cloud, um, as a cloud management Open Nebula, which is a quite, quite a small um, cloud management system that allows us to quickly deploy in uh, a central office. 
and it, it has all the functionality that you will have with the bigger uh, cloud management systems. Then we have uh, Onos to do all the SDN, and we have uh, developed some applications ourselves. And I have to say that we have not used any external help to do this. It's all been built by our engineering teams in Telefonica IMSD. And this was, has allowed us to really understand how SDN works, how do you uh, program each appliance, how do you program each service. And now we have been able to put uh, third-party CDNs, third-party uh, SBCs, either open or private uh, or proprietary, excuse me. So that's how, a little bit of the, how the architecture well, a, a comment and, uh, and another question then. The comment is, uh, when we interviewed operators about whether they were going to do cord or not, many of them told me, we're going to do cord-like. And so I heard you say, and, and cord is really a set of software templates. I call them templates. Software templates, hardware templates that you then mix and match in your own way and maybe do a little bit different. And that's what yeah. I hear you saying there. Well, uh, you know, the main, the main reason we, we deviated from CORE, we were very active at the very beginning when, we were, when CORE was starting, uh, with, actually we started with ONOS when ONOS was taking off. The main reason was that uh, the close forwarding, uh, the close forwarding appliance that, on, that CORE had was only IPv4. And we, from the very onset, decided that everything was going to be IPv6 and then IPv4 as a service. So we built, uh, we programmed our own uh, clause fabric uh, management system, which is clause forward. And uh, we are now working with a court to see if we can mix trellis and, and our solution to, to that point. The idea that we have is that most traffic should go east to west or west to east instead of having to come in, go into the servers, and then come out and, and move out again, just for, a speed, for latency reduction. So we're doing a lot of work on algorithms that allow us to move traffic uh, using ONOS or CORD as fast as possible from left to right without to having to move uh, up and down. So two things. One, it looked like this is mostly for consumer. Uh, and then secondly, could you now relate that to Unica? I know we have a whole day Friday tomorrow uh, uh, that where we could learn a lot about Unica, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> uh, Unica Unica is more uh, is in the in the larger uh, regional central offices or CPDs or data centers, and a lot of network functions that uh, that are of a bigger. Um, require more power, more processing power, and are more general to the whole network are gonna be, are gonna reside here. Um, and some of those, we will, we will take advantage of, of those BNFs and we will use them not to have to replicate those BNFs at this level. Uh, I think, uh, Maria, correct me if I'm wrong, is uh, the bind we're moving on to the, to Unica. Um, so there are ser several, several functions that we were de developing here, or we're using here, we're moving them to, to Unica, so we don't have to, to keep track of them, and we're just, they're a service to us. Uh, but a lot of uh, applications that our future services will demand that they're in close proximity to the end user will reside at this level. So it will be a split solution. So this initial, uh experiment, you're calling it, uh, it, is for consumer, but it, all of this applies easily to enterprise as well. Right now, uh, we are working with, uh, with uh, one, one of our affiliates on doings. They, are net, they serve mostly the, um, the mid, uh, small and, and mid enterprise, uh, mid-sized enterprise, and we're working with them on new products and services that will reside here and will serve them through the same infrastructure. Yeah, so it's not only for residential. We started with residential because it was the, for us, the mass market that we needed to, to help uh, the company with. Uh, you know, right now we are capable of moving the CPE resides here, the virtual CPEs reside here. Um, so, we, you know, the customer will have a, a machine 
or a container in the central office where he can manage all his network. The, net, the customer network will stand all the way to the, to the central office, so he'll have ample capability of putting more uh, agents on the, on, the, on the routing portion of his, homes, of his home device and being able to separate networks uh, at, the, at the residential level, and the same thing can be extrapolated for the business side. Nice. Of course, Telefonica was the very first in the world to have a virtual CPE deployment in Brazil and Sao Paulo for 100 or 200 families. Same basic principle was that the services were served up from the CO, uh, and they were a lot of video services to the home. Yeah. This is a much more full, uh, uh, much more capable uh, edition of that. Yes, uh, because we're able to, um, at, at the CPE that it will reside here, we're able to add uh, more agents on it uh, and, and address n new needs for IoT that are not, that the current devices at, sitting at the household are not capable of doing. For us to place an agent uh, on a home premise is very, you know, given the routers we use and you know commercial routers, it's very hard to get into them and add agents that provide functionality needed by new devices in the home. So by doing, you know, having the CPE here allows us to grow that machine with new agents and new capabilities very easily and, and uh, massively deployment. And that's what you did in Brazil, too, was that you chose families that had a router, but you reconfigured it. You did not change anything in the home. No, no new equipment. <laughs> yeah, the idea is that, you know, the, the, all the way to, to, the, to the virtual CP will be a layer two um, connectivity, and we'll manage all the layer three from here. Fascinating. Let's take an audience question. Say your name and organization. Hi, uh, Murray Cook, MC5G. Uh, I have two questions. One is, uh, the way that you look at this at the moment, you're at the end of the optical line, so you get very good latency. Do you see these uh, devices going into central offices, or would you see them going further downstream into the network, into places like street cabinets? Uh, in, in the topology we have at Telefonica, we don't have that many street cabinets, but you know, working with some of our colleagues at AT&T and DT, yes, we're looking at a solution that should be able to go to street cabinets uh, as needed. Um, so it's, it's, it's the idea that this is all, uh, can move all the way further into the, uh, to, to the edge as close as possible to the customer. Okay, my second question, you're talking about IoT, and we, we see uh, applications like Amazon Greengrass starting to appear. Uh, with this sort of architecture, you, we can see that there might be IoT segments that uh, other organizations might want to put applications onto your network. Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself becoming a, a distributed infrastructure as a service provider for these sort of applications? I don't know if we'll get to infrastructure as a service, but uh, we are right now working with Amazon on, on green grass and seeing to where is best to fit it. You know, it's, they're having problems on, on getting to fit their solutions here, so we're working with them on an experimental basis to see if the solution can reside here. Uh, we see more as a platform as a service or, uh, or you know, that an infrastructure as a service uh, solution. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Uh, to stay on time, uh, I'm going to say thank, thank you very much. Fascinating. Great presentation.